What's going on, Exa? Welcome to my Cyclone Elementalist based around the Disintegrator staff together with the Cast on Crit skill gem. It's a super fun build to play, and if you like big explosions that cover your entire screen, then this build is definitely for you. It's a great map clear as well as a good boss killer, so it's basically the best of both worlds. So, fellow exile, let's dive right into the items that are used for this dominating build. The main unique item that I use for this build is the Disintegrator Staff and it's the item the entire build is built around. The way this weapon works is you get plus one to maximum siphoning charges for every Elder or Shaper item equipped. You then have a 25% chance to gain a siphoning charge whenever you use the skill, as well as adding physical damage, some chaos damage and some physical damage reduction for every siphoning charge. You also get some life leech, but unfortunately you also take 150 physical damage for every second for every siphoning charge if you've used the skill recently. To mitigate this damage you want to stack physical damage reduction, reduce damage over time and life regeneration. Unfortunately armor and arctic armor etc won't do anything to reduce this damage. For chest I decided to go with Combs Heart for the 500 to maximum life. Uh, other options could be Belly of the Beast for life and the all rest or a uh, Elder or Shaper armor with physical damage reduction, some crit chance, life and some resistance. And for Helm I went with Starconia's head for the life, the evasion rating, the crit chance and the attack speed. And gloves I went with Shaper's touch to get an extra siphoning charge because it's a Shaper item and also to improve my accuracy. Same thing goes for the belt, to get an extra siphoning charge I used an elder belt as well as gain some life and some increased attributes. And because intelligence is higher than my strength I cannot be shocked and my strength is higher than my dexterity so I cannot be ignited. You also gain 1% damage for every 5 of your lowest attribute. And lastly I use a Mark of the Shaper Opal Ring for an additional siphoning charge as well as gaining 75% increased spell damage if your other ring is an Elder item. For rares these are the stats that you're looking for. I used an Elder Rare Ring to make sure I got the bonus from a Mark of the Shaper unique ring but I didn't want to use too many Elder or Shaper items so the GGN got too high so for amulet and boots I used regular ones. For the boots I went with life and resistance and movement speed and for the amulet I went with crit multiplier, life, crit chance and some stats. For a flask I use an eternal life flask with immune to bleeding, I use a diamond flask with immune to curses, I use an it serious promise, a wise oak and a quicksilver flask. If you have issues mitigating the damage from the disintegrator staff you can always use an basalt flask. The main gem setup that I use for this build is Cyclone and with Cyclone I have increased critical strikes and cast on crit and then I have Shark Nova, Ice Nova and Glacier Cascade. And for Auras I use Herald of Ice, Hatred, Herald of Ash and Enlighten. And in my boots I use Ancestral Protector, Leap Slam, Fortify and Summon Ice Golem. The reason I use Summon Ice Golem instead of something like faster attacks is because I don't really use Leap Slam that often. And in my gloves I use my defensive setup which is Cast When Damage Taken level 1, Immortal Call level 3, Frost Bomb level 10 and Assassin's Mark level 5. For skills these are the progressions that I went with. Early on I focused on life and some area and elemental damage. I took no major keystones but rather kept taking all the crit and life nodes that I could come across. I then picked up some extra staff nodes including smashing strike for the 10% chance on crit to gain an endurance charge as well as whirling barrier for the 10% chance to gain a power charge whenever you block an incoming attack. Lastly I filled out the dual sockets as well as some extra power charge damage. For Ascendancy I decided to go with Elementalist because of the damage penetration and the minimum shock damage on all enemies. The Elementalist has higher damage than Inquisitor whenever shock is up which should be most of the time but when it's not then the Inquisitor's damage is higher and you also get additional crit chance which helps trigger your cast on crit spells. Lastly you could go with Scion and do something like a Slayer with either Elementalist, Assassin, Raider, 
or perhaps even a Pathfinder for a more defensive setup. For the Elementalist Ascendancy choices I went with Pendulum of Destruction and then Mastermind of Discord. Mastermind of Discord made sure that damage penetrate 25% cold resistance while affected by Herald of Ice. You also get 25% increased effect of Heralds and 25% reduced mana reservation for every Herald skills. Then thirdly I went with Shaper of Desolation and then Beacon of Ruin. Beacon of Ruin makes sure that whenever I shock an enemy they take at least 20% additional damage. This works for Shaper and Ebre alert as well. For Pantheon I decided to go with Arakali for Major God and I made sure to get the 50% life regen bonus from capturing Arachnoxia. As Minor God I went with Soul of Ralakesh for the 25% reduced physical damage over time taken while moving. And since this is a Cyclone character so we're basically always moving. I took these two gods to best help mitigate the damage you take from the Disintegrated staff. For Bandit either help Alira for the crit damage and all resist or help Oak for the physical damage reduction as well as the physical damage. For leveling I always recommend using a Tabula Rasa. I started using Frost Bolts from level 1 and connected it to Spell Totems at level 8 and then leveled as Frostbolt Totems until level 34. I started rushing towards the closest jewel socket and added the Frostbolt Jewel Frozen Trail in it to get extra projectiles for my Frostbolts. Then once I hit level 34 I started using Cyclone together with a two hand weapon Reaper's Pursuit. I used Conk Effect and Critical Strikes with my Cyclone and then switched over Conk Effect to increase area of effect at level 38 and then decided to use only conk effect on the tougher bosses when needed. I switched out Reaper's Pursuit for Terminus S from level 51 and kept using that until level 64 when I could start using the Disintegrator staff. Remember to keep leveling all of the gems you will use later on in game while leveling. Other uniques I use while leveling are Wanderlust Boots, two Life Sprig Wands that I switched out for Axiom Perpetuum at level 10, Loctonio Caress Gloves, Darkness and Throne Belt, and Elrion rings. The main pros for this build is the great clear speed and the high single target damage. You also get great satisfaction from the huge Herald of Ice explosions that can cover your entire screen. The main cons for this build is that you cannot run reflect mods. No regeneration maps are annoying and unfortunately full screen clear explosions can cause some FPS lag depending on your computer.